searching both this world and its twin Looking for a place that I might belong more than a shadow to all my sin Now maybe it's time to step up like I've never seen a better reason why Come here darling, I'm gonna lose me in those flashing hot emerald eyes Try to be the word when you can't listen I Try to be the voice when you can't sing episode uh, we are dedicating to the Boy Scout troop here in Massachusetts troop 306 from Granby Massachusetts uh, we got in touch with them and they sent us in some questions so we're going to try to answer their questions we're going to do some prospecting uh, but first we're going to talk about bees for a, a, a minute or two because they have some questions they sent us some questions in so um, let's get ready to talk about the bees Tom has a bee suit on this is what we use to keep from getting stung by the bees now there are a few bees in the air because we're out in the yard but uh, generally if you leave them alone they'll leave you alone but if you ever see a beehive stay away from it because some people are allergic to it and they can be dangerous and they will get you and they'll get you if you uh, if you bother them ouch okay let me show you what a beehive is uh, Tom's going to show us the different components of it. This is the cover. It just goes on the top. And these are the two different brood boxes. The bees raise their young in the bottom box. And they store honey in the top box. And that's what they need to survive. Inside each box are these frames. This is a brand new frame before bees have gotten to it. And I'll put up a picture here of what it looks like when the bees build the honeycomb on it. And they use it to uh, raise their young all in the same honeycomb. And there is a third box that goes on top. Let me show you that. And this box is what we call, it's a little bit smaller than the other boxes. And this is what the bees store their extra honey. Extra, I mean honey for me. <laughs> and they put them in these frames. These had honey in them last year. We're going to put them back in and they're going to fill them up again this year. And this is the one that I take off and I take the honey out. I take the frames out and I put them into a machine that spins them. And it spins the honey out and we drain it into into jars it goes right from the jar gets filtered lightly and then goes into uh the, from the hive right into the jar now we have a few questions before we head out about beekeeping first question was do you ever get stung you ever yep. get stung you get yep. stung if you own bees you're gonna get stung and you don't get used to it it hurts <laughs> um, we try to do everything we Ouch. can to not get stung, um, but generally they're pretty, I mean, we're in the bee yard right now and they don't come over and sting you for no reason. You gotta be doing something to uh, have them sting you. And- uh, Like taking their honey. Yeah, like taking their honey. They don't like it when I take this top box because then I have to get all the bees off of it and bring it into the house. Mm -hmm. And they don't like that. Um, have you ever eaten a bee before? These are the questions from Troop 306, uh, Boy Scout Troop 306. Um, no, I've never eaten a bee. No. 
No, no, no. I don't think I used them in any <laughs> recipes. Not even by accident. No. And I don't think I would want to. I know someone who um, a bee went in his soda and he drank it and it stung him in his throat. And he went into the hospital because it swelled up and he couldn't breathe. Wow. Sounds like fun. Okay. okay. Uh, next question is, uh, do bee stings actually help cure diseases? There are places now throughout the country where you can go and get stung by bees for muscular dystrophy. Is that uh, apithera apitherapy? Apitherapy, I think they call it. Yeah. Uh, from arthritis to different things. Um, what it does is the bee sting, when your hand swells up or wherever you get stung, that's because blood is rushing to those areas. And that's what the bee venom does. So in uh, illnesses where people have bad circulation, or muscle problems, they'll use bees to sting certain areas. So yes, uh, it, it is being used. Mm -hmm. How much honey does a bee make? A bee makes a sixteenth of a teaspoon of honey in its lifetime. And a beehive like this will have about 50 to 70, 80, maybe even 100,000 bees in it and they'll make anywhere between 100 to 300 pounds of honey a year. Wow. This top box holds about uh, 30 pounds, 33 pounds of honey, and we'll put about three or more on during the course of the season, maybe four or five, depending on the, the bees and depending on the flowers in your area, that can vary quite a bit because the bees Go out to the flowers. That was the next question. What is the process of making honey? The bees go out and collect nectar at the flowers, um, and then they bring it back and they store it in the beeswax cells, and they dehydrate it down. They dry it out by fanning their wings. When it gets to the right consistency, they cap it and store it. Um, how long have you been making honey? We've been making honey for about 10 years now. Yeah. Um, and uh, the other question is, what got you into beekeeping? Well, we like honey. And we use the beeswax for making candles, uh, lip balm. Um, beeswax is a, another commodity that we can get out of a beehive as far as well as propolis is something else the bees make which has medicinal properties. How long have you had your YouTube channel? Well, we just started a year ago, just about a year ago, and we're going strong, so we're going to keep making videos about finding gold, and uh, occasionally talk about the bees. And uh, I think that's about it with the bees. That's about it. That's about it. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna, we gotta get going because we're heading up to camp and the Boy Scouts have more questions about prospecting and uh, camping and camp cooking and we'll be answering them throughout this episode but we got to get going we got to get up to the camp so we'll see you at the camp <laughs>
Okay, here's a quick knot that I use all the time. Um, I'm tying the chimney. These keep it from blowing over in the wind and it's attached to the top of the chimney. I come around, going through this pipe, and I go back over. Now here's the knot. You go under and through the loop, and you go under and through the loop again. So you're wrapping this one twice. Then you take it snug and you make another loop over here. And you go under and through that one and you draw that down. What that does is it makes a knot that looks like this, which is a slip knot. You can slide it up and it'll stay. Here it's connecting my chimney, coming down. You can connect this to anything. I'm just gonna uh, connect it to this, like that. Now I always go over so that my Extent the end of the line is towards me and the line coming down is over there it's Just the way I do it and you take this and you make your loop and you go under one You go under two two wraps around cinch that up like that and Then again you go up here you go under one more time and down I'm showing you this knot because it's it's the knot I use the most of any knot because it's adjustable and now that's done and you can adjust this up and it'll stay You can adjust it tighter and it'll stay and the reason it stays is because it pinches the way it's made And you lock it like I said by making another one one two three boom and now that's locked and that won't move and uh my number one knot. We got everything set up. And the black flies are just starting. So. Um, They'll tune you up good. Yeah. Another, another week or so. By the end, we're, we're here for a while. Uh, maybe seven to ten days. When we go out, sometimes it's that long. And we got a lot of videos to make. Good <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's uh let me show you around. I'm gonna give you an extensive tour of the camp uh site so the uh Boy Scouts who are watching this can uh, see how we do it. It may not be you know how everybody does it, but this is how us prospectors do it. We got in here just in time. It's pouring just as we got in and zipped up um here's the inside we have windows vents the vents we can leave open even when it's raining that's why uh those are great and there's one on each wall makes great uh circulation here's our stove we got our firewood stove goes right up through there we can get a sleeve but very little water comes through there, but uh, in the future I might do some. Any water that hits the stove dries right up. There's a little lip around it, so water coming down goes around. Here's a kitchen. We have a stove, and this is a water supply with a pump on it. You'll see. Voila. Now that normally goes into this. This is our kitchen sink. But right now it's just holding our kitchen supplies, pots and pans. So that's it. Sounds like the rain stopped. <laughs> All of a sudden. Moving this way, we'll go into the living area. Are those candle lanterns over there? Yes, those nice are thing. candle lanterns. Let me show you. These, these is a I like those. These are old. Um, and they're made for candles. And we make the candles out of beeswax. And we're going to light one of them up. It's free fuel because the bees make our beeswax for us to make candles. What's that other pump thing next to it that I see right there? This, this yeah. is our coffee maker. Let me show you. You put a K-cup in here. You take this. 
and you put that there, you put hot water in there. You squeeze the hot water down, you put your cup underneath, and you make a nice, fresh, hot cup of coffee. Or hot chocolate, or, or hot a tea. chocolate, or whatever, anything that comes in a K-cup. It's a great coffee maker. Here's our DeWalt fan. It's nice to have circulation when you're in a tent like this. Especially when you don't have a, a there's no rain fly, but we haven't had a problem with that. Um, but condensation can build up and circulating there's vents at the top and it helps dry it out when you're heating in the winter. And these batteries that run this, um, we have how many of these? Six. Six. And not only do they run our fan, but we have this device here, this little gadget that slips onto the battery. And it has two USB ports for charging phones or our lights like this lantern up here is an LED light. Looks like it. There we go. Does that go on? Yeah. Okay. Oh wow, that's pretty bright. Yeah, and they last a long time. And it dims. And we kind of use it as a night light at night when we need it. And also about this, you've got two USB ports to uh, charge um, our cameras, which we have a GoPro and my phone. Oh, yeah. And it comes off. It's just this. It's a light, too, it looks like. Yep. You put it on, and it's a light. One the other. And uh, there's our cots. And it leaves us room. We have uh, an alternate source of heat. Over here, which is a propane heat to knock the chill off. We may not be needing that in the future or, or the wood stove after another few weeks. And we got an alternate source of power back there if we ever run out, which is a battery that we can plug in. It has a like a power point outlet like you have in your car. And we have an adapter that we plug into that, which we can charge our laptop so we can do film editing and things like that. You like a nice carpet? Paisley. Paisley design. Nice on the feet. Um, and that's about it. We've shown you the camp. Now we want to get down to the river. Um, we're going to see what this weather is going to hold up. And we'll get down to the river, and we're going to see if we can find some gold. So, don't go away! Well, we made it out on the river. It, you can hear the river, it's real loud here. I'm gonna show you in a moment. Uh, and there's a few black flies. A few. Um, but we found a nice spot. We're here on the Gale River in Bethlehem, New Hampshire. Let me show you around. The river goes down that way. And we're the, it goes up this way. And there's a big boulder here. And then it starts to turn back around and the river goes over to the right. It goes up and around the corner to the right. We're at the end of an inside bend. And that's where you look. Behind a large obstruction like this rock, somewhere in here, there may be some good gold. We're gonna check over there. We're gonna check over here. Cause the current slows. There's a lot of materials and there's some heavy stones. I see some dark colored stones. Uh, so we're going to snoop around here, see if we can find some gold, and uh, we'll show you how to uh, pan for gold. Great to sun and clouds today. Rain in one minute and sunny the next. Alright, we got a pan. 
This is a half inch classifier. These are black flies. Black flies are eating us alive right now. Well, not me, because I have a head net on. They've come out in droves. Gold is the heaviest thing in the pan. It's going to sink to the bottom as long as you keep shaking it. So we shake it. And then you wash off the top. The gold should be down the bottom. Shake it again so the gold goes to the bottom. Wash it off. Is that called stratification? Yes. Stratification. Very good. The heavy stuff is going down the bottom like the gold, lead, iron. Black flies, they're going, they're floating on the surface. <laughs> Wash it off. I do it right over the ripples in the pan. So the gold sitting down the bottom won't get washed out and gets caught in the ripples. Keep doing that process. Until you get down, you'll see the sand get darker as you go down. That's the heaviest stuff. See how dark it is? When you get to mostly that, Scoop up a little water, turn your pan around, wash it all down to the bottom, down there. All right? Dump out a little bit of water, and then we'll show you what we do here. You've got your stuff down there, and then you flatten it out a little, and you wash this back. And you're looking through here for anything shiny going by. I haven't seen anything yet, but we still got a little ways to go. Do this part slowly, watching through here for any little bits of yellow shiny stuff. Looks like a lot of heavies in there. A lot of heavies, a lot of black sand. Material looks good. But I don't see it now. If there was gold, but there isn't gold in this pan. But if there was, it would be sitting down the bottom with all this fine, heavy stuff. And there's nothing in this pan. So we have to try again. Tom's got new sneakers. Good memory foam, it looks like. Huh. I just got them yesterday. <laughs> My first pan didn't have anything in it. If gold was easy to find, it wouldn't be worth so much. But we know there's gold here because we've been here before. Uh, we were further upstream. We've never been to this particular spot. But Tom says this is the spot, so he's digging. So we're going to, he's going to dig that and then we'll pan that out and see if we get anything in it. There we go. Hoping there'll be some decent gold in this one.
we got look at that and we got a couple more over there on a little piece there yeah so that's not too bad we'll take that we'll suck it up let me show you how we do that this is how we suck up the gold because the, the gold is real small you can't grab it with your little fingers so you use one of these snuffer bottle or a snifter bottle and you squeeze it and when you let go it sucks in air you put that under the you put the gold under the water you see it sitting over there you squeeze it and as you let it go it'll suck that gold right up and now you got the gold in here and Tom picked a pretty good spot up oh, there's another little piece look at that too Take all that black sand. There might be another one hanging in there. We'll clean it up later. But I'm going to wash this back one more time, make sure there's no more in there. And uh, I'm going to dig another one. We found some gold in the second pan. Well, it was where Tom dug it. I panned it out. But uh, we give the credit to whoever digs it, so he can dig it. He dig it. He dug it. So he's the flake of the day. So I'm gonna to try to beat him before we go. Getting late, but we're gonna... The showers come through, it rains and stops. But I see blue sky over there and a rain cloud over there. But we found some gold, so that deserves a gold dance. I'd like to take this moment to thank our members, those who hit that join button down below and become a member. Also, those who shop at thehipbee.com. These names you see on the screen here are those members and those shoppers. And we like to say thank you to you. You make it possible to uh, keep us doing this and uh, we want to say thank you you are special people I hope you can hear us the river's real loud here it's pouring down over here and uh, we found gold uh, we're gonna dig in that same spot where Tom found the gold and now that uh, we've got a good dance under our belt we'll see what we can find um, now, I want to talk about rules. The rules. Um, you got to know the rules of the area where you're going to go prospect. Here in New England, each state is different. Today, we are in the White Mountain National Forest of New Hampshire. And you need a permit for that. You have a permit? Probably I'm eating my snack. He's eating funny bones. I can't have funny bones. Yep. We both got permits. We've got permits. 
and you can use a pan and a trowel classifier, but that's it. You can't use a sluice box in the White Mountain National Forest. And a sluice box, you run classified material through it and uh, it traps the heavy gold in it and you wash it out and clean it. And that was a question from one of the scouts, is what the sluice box do. And that's what it does. It's a device that traps the gold. But you can't use them in the White Mountain National Forest, but you can outside of the White Mountain National Forest as long as you get permission from the landowner. And you don't need a permit um, in New Hampshire uh, to sluice or to pan um, outside of the White Mountain National Forest. But inside the White Mountain National Forest, you can only pan and you need a permit. And that's about it. Tom's eating funny bones over there. Healthy. So, I can't have the funny bones. But I'm uh, going to cook something good for dinner. But uh, we're just taking a break here. It's been a long day. We're going to do one or two more pans here, see what we can find. Uh, to add to our collection. So don't go away! I got a question from the uh, Boy Scout Troop 306 from Granby, Massachusetts. They asked, can you tell us your favorite spot to find gold? And the answer is no! I'm not going to tell you my favorite spot to find gold. But I will tell you a spot where you can find gold. And the wild Ammanusik River, uh, you can find gold in that. You can find gold in the Ammanusik River as well. Uh, also Tunnel Brook, uh, the Baker River. Those are very popular rivers where people go looking for gold. And all you need is a pan and a little shovel like I have and a snuffer bottle to get the gold out and that's it you can find gold with just those three things if you wanted to get a classifier to make it a little bit easier a half inch classifier and you're good to go and you can find gold uh, so I better stop dilly dallying and get back to digging well we just realized it's like quarter past seven we got a premiere tonight we got to get back to our camp um, it's only, we're only walking there, but uh, we can't do another pan. We'll have to do some more tomorrow. But we gotta go. We gotta premiere. back to the tent just in time for the premiere it's the premiere we're off and running who's in the premiere tonight Tom let me see if I can see oh there's a lot Brian Kennison Donnie W gold Panner, heavy metal detective Heidi and Conan John Bresham, J.P. Lonsmore, Kenneth Smith, Moto Mining, Mrs. J.P. and Bulldogs, Mama Partridge, Arthur Wally, Thomas Hunt, and Hippie Explorer. What do you know about that? I gotta go back and watch the premiere. Yeah, I'll let that go. And let it rip. We were supposed to have fish tonight. I think that was one of the questions, wasn't it? Uh, did you ever cook seafood? Yeah, the question, do 
Do you ever cook seafood on your campouts? And we would have been cooking it tonight. And we do. We cook shrimp. Uh, we've been talking about doing steamers sometime. Um, but the cod, which we were going to cook, was frozen solid. And we needed to cook and eat. So we're going to cook something else instead of fish tonight. How about do you ever use foil while you're cooking that seafood? And yes. Or any food? Yes, we use foil on the grill to cover the grill at times. And we use foil to wrap fish in, vegetables in, and we cook them over the fire. Well, that leads to the next question. Have you ever cooked with a tripod? Uh, well, no, we don't have one. I'd like to try cooking with a tripod. Maybe somebody will buy us one. Send us one. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. But uh, I'm going to get this ready, and I'll meet you over at the stove. All right, we're ready to start cooking. So... Let me show you what we got here. This is what we call, uh, it's called a can cooker. And it's kind of like a crock pot for a wood stove. You can use it like a Dutch oven as well. Um, it's and a pressure cooker to some extent. And it comes, it doesn't come with these, but you can buy, does it come with these? No. Some of them do, but I've didn't. And I got that one separate. And we put that down the bottom in there to get your stuff up off the bottom. And in this uh, dish we're making, we're going to put a, some water. I put about a half of half of one of them, so that's about a cup or so. And we're going to put some corn on the cob in there, pieces. We're gonna have fish on the grill, but I think you heard the story. It's frozen like a block. So I'll have to tune in next week or another week, I'm not sure when it'll air. And watch the fish episode. We've got red, yellow, and green peppers we're gonna put in there. Also got some kielbasa we're going to put in there. All of that right in there. Now, to make this uh, interesting, we're using this uh, seasoning. It's a marinade mix, but we're not using it as a marinade. We're going to take it. It's for marinating uh, everything. And we're going to sprinkle about half of this package meal. And also, we're going to use hippie honey right there. This is our fall honey. It's dark. And we're going to put a little drizzle, about a tablespoon, maybe two tablespoons, over everything. And that'll all mix in and melt in and that's it we're going to take it put the lid on it and let it do its thing all right we're going to check this so let's open it up Smells good. Smell it. Oh yeah. I want to mix those spices up a little bit. Whoops, that's the ring that goes on there. Oh look. There's a sticker. <laughs> oh no. 
<laughs> the stick is a fat free, gluten free, cholesterol free. There it is. <laughs> we'll take that out. That smells really good. Um, everything feels cooked to me. So we're gonna take that off there. And we're gonna heat up the beans. Take that off. And we're gonna heat up the beans. And we'll meet you over at the table and we'll put it on a plate. All right. Let's see. Look at that. Wow. That looks amazing. Nice herbs and spices on that. Oh, yeah. That looks great. All right, we're gonna, and we got some baked beans back there, and we're going to uh, put that on a plate, and now we'll go over to the table, and we'll tell you how it is. Well, here we are, but we don't have the food because we already ate it. We didn't realize until now that the camera wasn't on, so we'll pretend like we're eating it. Oh! It was delicious. Delicious. The corn on the cob. Actually, it really was really good. Uh, the corn and the kielbasa in the, in the uh, can cooker. Came out awesome. Came out awesome. Tasty. The seasoning was great. And uh, it's easy. Yeah. Uh, we like that can cooker. We're going to use it more often. Um, another thing. The beginning of this episode, we were in the bee yard, but uh, what you don't know is right after we were done filming the beginning of this video in the bee yard, our bees swarmed, and that's when a beehive um, gives, birth. gives birth to a new queen, and that uh, old queen takes half the bees and flies away to find a new home and here's a little video clip of that happening there are tens of thousands of bees in the sky here flying around and they're following the queen and they'll they ended up going into my neighbor's yard and I brought them over a jar of honey and we got the bees out of the tree using a bee vacuum which uh, is not a regular vacuum. It's a vacuum that, because they were 20 feet or more up in the tree. So I have a long pole with a hose and we suck the bees down and goes right into a hive. And they're now in the yard. So I wanted to show you that uh, bee swarm that happened uh, just this week. We want to thank the Boy Scout Troop 306 in Granby, Massachusetts for contacting us and sending in the questions about camping and prospecting. And uh, here's to you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, anyone out there, if you're not a subscriber, hopefully we earned your subscription today and hit that subscribe, uh, the subscribe button down there. And that's about all. So until next time. Peace. Peace.